Did you know that deep in the Amazon forest there are indigenous people who have chosen not to contact the rest of us? People who don't need electricity and don't have bank accounts or ID cards. They don't use phones and most probably don't know that cars even exist. You didn't know. Well, they are called indigenous peoples in voluntary isolation and they have decided not to have contact with any people outside their community, including other indigenous peoples. Why do they live like this? They made this decision more than 500 years ago, after the arrival of the Spanish and Portuguese who violently enslaved, tortured, and murdered local indigenous groups. Some managed to avoid this fate by taking refuge deep in the forest. They have survived in isolation despite threats by drug traffickers, rubber tappers, loggers, poachers, miners, and missionaries. But how have they survived without depending on the outside world? As incredible as it seems, isolated people only need one thing, their lands. They are among the only people in the world that depend 100% on the forest. Their lives revolve around their knowledge of the forest, where they hunt, grow food, and build their houses. These people inhabited the Amazon long before colonial powers arrived. They have maintained their cultures for hundreds of years and know the forest better than anyone in the world. At the same time, in their condition of isolation, they have not developed the immune defenses to survive diseases they have never experienced. Thus, they are extremely vulnerable to the effects of contact with outsiders. A simple flu could kill most of them. Perhaps you don't believe me. Well, it already happened in Colombia. It was at the end of the 1980s in the rainforests of Guaviati when missionaries, cocoa growers, settlers, and neighboring populations came into contact with the Nukok people. Not long after, disease reduced the Nukok population by half. Many elders and children died. So, to protect indigenous peoples in voluntary isolation, we must allow them to live in isolation. But they are not as alone as you might think. Some individuals, organizations, and government institutions are committed to the protection of these peoples and the lands they inhabit. These actors work together and in silence. They protect the isolated peoples without their knowing. In Colombia's Pude River National Park, the government, neighboring indigenous communities, and environmentalists like the Amazon Conservation Team work together. By monitoring the area from strategically located guard posts and river patrols, they prevent threats to the isolated peoples. But how do we know where the isolated peoples are? Look skyward. You will need some luck to see them, but powerful satellites orbit our planet. With photos taken by these satellites, we can see indigenous peoples in voluntary isolation, as well as threats to their land, such as illegal mining, logging, livestock farming, roads, and clandestine airstrips.
In the Paday Park, the contacted neighboring indigenous communities also helped to protect the isolated peoples, agreeing on the use of their often overlapping territories. In these agreements, the contacted groups determined the hunting and fishing areas that will be left for the sole use of their isolated brothers and sisters. The elders and the healers of the contacted communities believe that they can communicate with the isolated peoples through shamanism. The shamans say that their isolated neighbors tell them that they are happy living in this way. They teach their children about the importance of protecting the lands, way of life, and self-determination of their isolated brothers and sisters. Meanwhile, their institutional allies and the local communities continue to work to prevent the threats of resource extraction and the threats of those with the dangerous intention of contacting isolated indigenous communities. In 2016, the leaders of the Curare Los Inglesias Indigenous Reserve, adjacent to the Pude River National Park, said the following. Although we do not have direct contact with the isolated Yuri people, through our spirituality, we can protect their territory in order to keep the ancestral relationship alive and ensure that no one contacts them. Because we all perceive territory as an undivided whole, the connection between our thoughts helps manage and maintain harmony in the territory. In the Amazon, in addition to wondrous landscapes, mighty rivers, impenetrable forests, and astonishing wildlife, one finds indigenous groups that live freely and in harmony with their lands. We have learned that protecting some of these peoples means letting them remain separate from the outside world and protecting their lands. When we protect those lands, we are protecting vast expanses of forest that provide human necessities and help regulate our climate. And we are also preserving an essential part of the cultural diversity of our world.